Slab leak detection. Do you need it or is it something that your company provides? If you're a plumber or you own a plumbing company, this is something that maybe you might start doing to help grow your business. It's something you can definitely do to help your customers. Are you a homeowner and you need to know more about slab leak detection? I'm gonna tell you what we do and how we do it and why to me it is so important. I'm gonna give you step-by-step -step the procedure that we go through and tell you about some of the equipment that we use. First of all, if you've got water coming up through your slab or you walk into a house as a plumber and you do, you need to do a couple of things. You need to do a water sewer test. Now you may just be able to go look at the meter and see if it's turning, but doing a water sewer test is actually gonna let you know for sure, do you have a leak on the water? Do you have a leak on the sewer? Do you have a leak on both? And make you wonder which one's coming up here. Today, what we're gonna really talk about though is a water service leak meaning it's either in the service in the yard, it's under the house, but it is definitely on the potable water system. Now, if you're a plumber, you understand that, okay, water comes in, water goes out. Either one of them can leak. Now, a lot of municipalities are getting where they don't want you to turn off the water at the meter. I understand, call them all day long, make them come back and forth. The thing is, the homeowner really should have a valve at the house, I get that. And then this is a good time that if they don't, it may be something you talk to them about. If you're a homeowner, you definitely want a valve at the house. You want one up by your house so if there's ever a problem, so your water heater just starts leaking, you can actually go out in your front yard or backyard, open the valve box, turn a ball valve a quarter of a turn and shut it off. This can save you so much money. Those of y'all that saw my other video about meter dog, wait till you see the next one where it's got a remote shutoff valve. That's right, on my phone, I can just press a button and shut it off. But that's a whole nother video. So let's get back to this. After you do a water test and you determine that there is a leak on the water system, you need to do a couple of different things. You need to check and see if there's a double check assembly for the irrigation system, or if there's an automatic pull filler. If you'll shut those valves off and watch it again, those two things are known to leak pretty often. Now, if there's water coming up through the floor in the house, it's probably not gonna be these, but it's something you can at least check. Now, after you've checked those two things, you've got those isolated, you do your water test, it's leaking. Now, what do you do? Hopefully they've got a valve up by the house that isolates the yard service from the house because now you need to do this test again and isolate it to find out is the leak under the house or is it out in the yard? If it's out in the yard, you're gonna take a probe type listening device. Hopefully you know where the line is or you can locate it, but you're gonna go along that water line and listen to see if you can hear it. If you can't, you may end up needing to replace the entire service. I understand that, it happens. Homeowners understand, it's just part of it. We may not be able to find every leak out in the yard depending on how deep they are, what the material is, have there already been repairs on it that maybe isolate it where our location equipment can't tell us exactly where the line is. But we're gonna do everything that we can to find it. Now, say you isolate it and the leak is under the house. Now, you're gonna go through that process again. But this time, you're gonna isolate the hot and the cold. Now, whether you're isolating in the yard or at the water heater, you wanna make sure there is a full port ball valve there. Now, full port's not really critical, but the fact that it's a ball valve is where you can turn and you know the water's shut off. If there's an old gate valve, I either do not use it, I do not service that valve, open it and close it, but I will tell them if I close this and it shuts down, I may not be able to turn the water back on because your valve is old. I would recommend replacing it with a ball valve because that is the only way that we can guarantee, number one, it'll shut and open, but number two, when it shuts, we also know that it holds. But now you're gonna isolate the hot from the cold. Once you've done that, that's gonna help you figure out where it is. Let's say, for instance, just for this video, it's on the cold side. Now what you're gonna do, you're gonna take some listening equipment. There's actually four different kinds that we use. We use the geophones, you know, the brass stethoscopes that you plug in your ear and you actually lay these down and listen. Non-electronic, you're literally listening to every sound coming through that floor. I like those. The electronic equipment that we use, we use Leaktronics, we use Leak Pro, and we use subsurface leak detection. 
And to be honest with you right now, I'm designing my own leak detection equipment because I've got some ideas of some cool stuff for it. Any way you go though, what you wanna do at this point is go to every angle stop on that system. So like I said, this is the cold system. We're gonna to go to the washing machine. We're gonna to go to the ice maker. If there's a separate valve for the dishwasher, we're gonna to listen to it. Then we're gonna to listen to every angle stop under every lavatory, behind every toilet. If there's a way to get into the tub and shower valves, we're gonna to listen to them. Hose bibs outside, we're gonna to listen to everything that we can to hear what we can hear. Leaking water makes a very unique noise. And what we're trying to do is find this noise and see where we can find it the loudest. Now, I told you about the electronic equipment that we use. Leaktronics and subsurface leak detection actually turn all the filters off. I don't want to filter out anything. I want to hear every noise possible. And I'm not an electronics guy. I don't know what all those filters will do. I want to make sure I can hear everything. Now let's say I found two angle stops that are the loudest. I'm not going to assume that that's a straight line. I don't know how the plumber ran it. What I'm going to try to do is use a line locator and figure out exactly where that line is. Now, no matter what equipment I've got, I'm going to try to listen right above that line to see if I can hear anything. If I can't, now I may need to induce air into the system. I will take a very low flow air compressor, put air into the system. Now I'm listening for the bubbles. I'm listening for that rumbling noise, but I'm only going to listen right along that line. Now, if it's screaming loud at one valve and not as much the other, I probably know which one it's closer to, and that's how I'm gonna look at it. Now, if you're someone who already does lab leak detection and location, anything like that, tell me, is there equipment that you use that I have not mentioned here? I use all these systems, but like I said, I'm designing my own because I want special things out of it. If there's something special about the equipment you use or you do something a little bit different than I do, please do me a favor and leave me a comment down here and let me know. Because by the time you're done with this, you should be able to put a mark on the ground and say, this is where your leak is. Now, I always tell the homeowners, there could be beams, there could be things under here that are affecting the noise that I can't see from where we're at. But with all this equipment I have, this is where it's telling me the leak is. And hopefully that'll help me put them on it quicker. Now, next time we're gonna do a video on slab leak repair. Have you tunneled up under a house? Have you done a reroute? Have you jackhammered a hole in the floor? What kind of repairs are you making? Anyway, I hope that this has helped you out. Knowing step-by-step step how to go through, what to look for and what to listen for. That bubbling, that rumbling noise. That's gonna help put you right on top of the leak if you have the right equipment. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.